100% pure rock. 107.7 The Bone. 107.7 The Bone. It's the Metal Zone. That was Metallica with Whiplash. Metallica, of course, doing that Orion Music and More Festival that's going to be in Jersey. If you want to go, you got to road trip it in June. Ozzy Osbourne before that with Diary of a Madman. And we started off the night with Guar and Penguin Attack. Guar, of course, tonight at the Regency in San Francisco with Municipal Waste. And uh, in the studio with me. Hi, I'm I- Tony. What's up? How you doing? I'm I'm better now. <laughs> Um, so Municipal Waste, you have a new album, and it is called The Fatal Feast, and it's going to come out on Tuesday, but people can buy it, like, tonight at the Regency, right? Yeah, it's the only place we have it for sale. We have it on vinyl, too, which is also the only place you can get it. So we have people- pop-up vinyl, too, which is like a gatefold pop-up. It's a pop-up book? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, the gatefold vinyl is a, like a pop-up book, yeah. So I don't think anyone's done that before. It's I don't even, crazy. I can't even picture that. I don't so the the record it's is just it, like a pop up book, like a children's book or something, but it comes out. The artwork from the album cover pops up, like sticks out, jumps out at you. That's insane. So you yeah. open it up, and the artwork pops up, and then underneath the artwork is the sleeve. Yep. Sick. Yeah, it it came out really awesome. Now, if nobody, if people, um, if for some reason they're listening tonight and like they're stuck at work and they can't get to the show tonight to buy the album, are you guys selling it online? It'll be out the tenth. Okay, so they, right they can now get it. can't get it anywhere, but our shows. Awesome. And yeah. um, so I'm assuming that uh, the, the Richmond VA connection is uh, a major part of the reason you guys are out with Guar? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that and the, the fact that we have a record coming out, too. But it, it's definitely, like, the like fact that we're really close friends with them. They've had a pretty rough year, and I think they just wanted to bring out a band that they're close with. I mean, we, I hang out with those dudes at home all the time. They're, like, we're all tight. And we're also tight with Ghoul, too, so this tour is like a no-brainer. We would have probably done it even if we didn't have a record coming out. It's just like, <laughs> you know, we, we took a year and a half off of, like, touring nonstop. And, you know, they asked us to do it, and we are like, let's go. I'm kind of assuming that touring with Guar is just massive fodder for stories of, like, weird stuff that happens. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Anything that comes to mind? Like... I mean, every night, it's, it's do, weird. Do you just like, always scare people at truck stops? And yeah. <laughs> I try to not get blood on me. That's like the joke this tour is like, I'm not getting blood on me. We've toured with them before, and it's a mess. It's always a mess. But yeah, we'll go, I'll end up going to the truck stops covered in blood and not even knowing it. People just look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that and just, yeah, it's just. Do you guys have, like, a list of one-liners when people see you, like, all stumble off the bus covered in blood <laughs> and green and, and whatever? Just no, looking at us? No, not, not, not us. I'm sure they do. I'm sure. And the band Ghoul, too. They, like, Guar, like, takes showers after shows, and, like, Ghoul doesn't care. And they, like, will walk around, like, with just blood all over them because they do the same thing. And we're, we play right between them, and we're the only band that doesn't shoot blood around. So it's kind of hard to stay clean. Does it get slippery? <laughs> Uh, they got a rug on the stage, which, which but I they was roll a out and roll idea. back. Yeah, it's kind of a brilliant idea. Because the stuff just gets everywhere. I I've never seen venues more wrecked than on this tour, and I've even from the last tours I've done with them, did ten weeks with them. I'm still shocked. Like I, like the other night, I pulled the manager aside and was like, "Are you guys like mad at this venue or something? Like, why is it so wrecked right now? They're, like, just huge puddles of blood." It's like they got something to prove right now, I guess. I don't I don't know, but it's amazing. I don't know if they're doing it tonight, but the last couple of times Gore has been at this venue, they've rolled out the plastic. They've plasticked the entire venue. Like from the minute you walk in the door, plastic on the floor, everywhere. I've, I've seen some of it, but not as much as I've seen in other venues. And this is a really nice venue we're playing tonight, it seems. I mean, the walls are all white, white. and painted. There's no, <laughs> yeah. there's no tags about... <laughs> Dirty jokes and stuff. All yeah, over the, walls. the bathrooms are clean. And the green room doesn't have a penis drawn on it, really big on the wall. Can yet, I say that? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we haven't left yet. But. Awesome. So, uh, you guys have kind of like a big Bay Area connection, um, and being from Richmond, Virginia, how did that happen? Because, like, you guys played burnt ramen a bunch. Like, you guys were out here for ages. Yeah, we have root, roots here, big time. Uh, we our first album, Waste Them All, was on the label out of Katati, which is like north of here, called Six Weeks Records. And uh, they put out a bunch of Bay Area bands, too, like Capitals Casualties, which is one of my favorite bands. And, uh, yeah, a bunch of bands. And, and we just had have been friends with them and just toured. One of the first tours we were, went out with was this band Votesec from the Bay Area. And we just kind of blossomed from that. And 
you know, this is still one of my favorite places to play in the world. So having spent so much time out here, um, is there anything that you look forward to getting a chance to see or do when you get into the Bay Area? I mean, I know being on tour, you don't get a lot of free time and I'm sucking up some of it, but um, <laughs> like places that you like to go eat or things that you guys like to do when you're out here? I look, I look forward to going to my friend Scotty's house. <laughs> He's just like <laughs> one of my best friends. So I was just like hanging out on his couch and like joking around with him. <laughs> That's I, that's the stuff I love, like just seeing friends that I've had here for a long time. Like I've seen a lot of San Francisco and, and Oakland, and uh, I've never been to Alcatraz though. And I, wa- I was gonna try to do it today with some of the Guar guys, but too hectic. That's actually the Bay Area joke. Everyone who lives here doesn't go. Yeah, <laughs> right, cool. Well, I guess that's good then. I've been once, and it was only because I had to work. I had to do like a gig out at Alcatraz, and that was the only time I ever went. So oh, you're you're good. It's it's actually like you do live here. Yeah, good, good. Cool. <laughs> so um, Municipal Waste is going to be living here tonight with Guar at the Regency, and if you leave right now, you might still be able to catch them, but I don't know. Eh, yeah, probably not. Um, Judas Priest is on the way. It's 1077 The Bone. It's the Metal Zone. 1077 The Bone, that is Anthrax in the Metal Zone with Belly of the Beast. Anthrax is going to be on the Rockstar Energy Mayhem Festival Tour, and everybody who's out there freaking out thinking that Mayhem tickets went on sale this week, no, it's okay. They went on sale this week everywhere else. We will have your Mayhem ticket on sale next week and of course we'll have tickets to give away and all kinds of awesome stuff so make sure you're listening to me next week um, all night long every night because I'll have a ton of tickets to give away and it will be awesome down before that with Beautifully Depressed and Priest the live version of Green Man Alishi I'm Nikki Black and in the studio with me tonight is Tony from Municipal Waste so you guys are kind of considered part of like the new thrash revival and but with like a uh, like a punk edge is that is like is that a fair assessment? I mean, how would you describe yourself to people who aren't familiar? I think I think we have more of a, like yeah, punk hardcore sound than most of the like more modern like thrash bands that are around. People say it's like crossover. I I don't really like to say that. I like I'd rather say like speed metal punk or something like that, you know. But yeah, it's fast and aggressive and it's definitely has punk elements, but very very much a thrash band. Well, at least there's not the word core in any description that you yeah, use, so yeah. we can always appreciate that. Well, the term metalcore was actually a good thing before all the crappy bands ruined it. Because it used to be like bands like The Accused, The Agnostic Front, but now it's like, I don't even want to say their Come names. Come on, so tag some bands. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, Go ahead. You know what metalcore bands are, and oh. they suck. Um, so it's, I mean, uh, being part of the Bay Area thrash scene, we've all just been, you know, walking around with big grins on our faces because it's had such a revival. Um, how do you guys feel about being like part of the revival and how long do you think it's going to keep going? Um, you know, we were kind of doing it before it was a th- even a thing. So like to see it blow up like this is, is really cool. You know, it's exciting. But, uh, you know, what I don't think- like coming around when new metal was still like. Well, huge, the reason why being shoved down everybody's throats. Kind of why we did the band is because nobody was doing it, and we were like mad about that. And we kind of like a lot of our earlier stuff has, was more like tongue in cheek, because we were kind of like picking on metal bands and 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 people that took themselves so seriously and like just yeah, I mean early two thousands like metal was pretty weird at that time. Like you know, Limp Biscuit was huge. I mean, they still are, I guess, but there's a lot better music out there but it seems like people know more about like you know better bands nowadays it seems like metal in general is taking a big resurgence yeah i blame the internet it's kind of awesome yeah i'm into it I'm i in, think i'm into the interweb yeah I love it. and you've got corn and limp biscuit both trying to make comebacks like in the last couple of years too and just corn doing okay with it but limp biscuit not so much yeah no they're not really doing it mm. i mean for me i love it you, no i'm just kidding i don't, <laughs> I don't really like it Fatal Feast is the new municipal waste. It comes out on Tuesday, but you can buy it tonight at the show. Um, although at this point, if you're not at the show, then you're not going to be able to get it. So you're probably going to have to wait till Tuesday. I suggest you buy it at a local record store and support what's left of them if you can. And uh, in the studio with me, Tony from Municipal Waste. It's 1077 The Bone. It's the Metal Zone. 1077 The Bone. That is Iron Maiden in the Metal Zone with Can I Play With Madness. Maiden is going to be playing at the Shoreline Amphitheater on August 3rd with Coheed and Cambria. Yes, Coheed and Cambria. August 3rd, and tickets are on sale now at LiveNation.com. Queen's right before that, Jet City Woman and Motorhead with Orgasmatron. Motorhead, of course, going to be on the Rockstar Energy Mayhem Festival, which is going on sale next week at LiveNation.com. So don't worry, we will definitely have tickets to give away, and you will definitely be able to get your tickets next week because apparently everybody is, like, losing their mind over the Mayhem Fest. Currently in the studio, Tony, Municipal Waste. Hello. How's it going? Good, very good. So um, you guys, I'm, I'm curious. You guys are about to go out on tour with Three Inches of Blood, which is funny because they were here last night. Um, 
Yeah, I guess we're kind of intertwining towns on this tour with what their tour is. So I'm looking at the dates, and I don't see anything in the Bay Area, but I'm wondering if it's because you weren't able to announce it because you guys are playing with Oh, Guar we could probably tonight. announce it now. I'm thinking that, yeah, since yeah, you have, okay. by the time this airs, you will have already played with Guar. I'm thinking you could, like, cough up the Bay Area gonna, date. I'll tell you right now. Uh, look here. It's, in, it's in Oakland, and it's Waste Three Inches of Blood, Black Tusk, and I think Lecherous Gaze is playing, too. Mm-hmm which is members of Annihilation Time. Oakland Metro, and the date is... I don't know where it is. <laughs> but it's happening. June something at the Oakland Metro, for sure. It will be happening, and I'm sure we can have all the information before the tickets go on sale. Yeah, and we're stuff. excited to play there again. It was, last time we played there, it was awesome. Awesome. So how did you guys um, hook up this new bill? Like, <laughs> whose idea was that? Um, I think it was all of us, because we, we've heard good things about those guys. We, we like to tour with bands that, that we want to hang out with. <laughs> It's weird. And bands we like, of course. And I don't think that's weird at all. <laughs> We're really picky, like, with the bands we go out with. It's true. You got to spend three to six weeks, like, exactly. every <laughs> single day, waking moment with these guys. Yeah. Tour jerks. Yeah. But uh, Black Tusk, they're, like, the best dudes. And, uh, they're like southern boys. So we were like, all right, we got to tour them because they like to gamble and stuff, too. Like, do they grill on the road? I don't, yeah, they do, actually. Yeah. And we play dice and hang out. And then, like Three Inches of Blood, like Toxic Holocaust, and uh, a couple other bands that have toured with them said that they're great guys. And you know, the Canadians, we love Canadians. Canadians are clean. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> clean. Yeah. Clean Canadians. They're clean. They're nice. They're easygoing. Yeah. If you're like, hey, we're running a little late, you guys might not get to sound check. They're like, eh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's good, and we're yeah gonna go out and hit the U.S. with them. Awesome. Um, so on the way, I have got Trivium and uh, Tony in the studio with me all night. It's 1077 The Bone. It's The Metal Zone. Nice. 1077 The Bone. That is brand new from Municipal Waste in The Metal Zone. The song is Fatal Feast and the title track to the new album, which comes out on Tuesday. And uh, in the studio with me, Tony from Municipal Waste. And uh, I guess at this point, it's easy to say you guys are going to be back in town at the Oakland Metro June 13th with Black Tusk and Three Inches of Blood. Um, yeah, look, we're promoting the show already. It's good. We're on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. We're like instantly totally on top of it. Um, so the new album, you want to tell people about it? Uh, yeah, it's coming out the 10th. Which we're talking about. We have it here, but you know, and uh, yeah, it took us about a year to write it. Took a year off from touring and, and all that stuff. Wrote a, wrote it, wrote a, that and also recorded a split 12 inch with Toxic Holocaust. So was yeah. that for Record Store Day? Uh, no, not yet. We have something else planned for Record Store Day that I can't say, but I'm really now. Really? Because everybody's already, I thought everybody already announced all their Record Store Day stuff. Because it's coming up. I think there's, I think we have this. It's still a secret. Something weird coming up. Yeah. I don't know why. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I think we have like. Do you know where you're going to be doing something weird for Record Store no. Day? Secret. Oh. Damn it. Sorry. That's all right. It's all right. You know, we, we, we well, we got the concert date out of you. So that was, that yeah, was that's, that's good enough. Good enough. Um, so what kind of stuff uh, were you guys writing about when you made the album? Uh, this is our space themed album because we figured that. You know, it's our fifth record, and we've been a band for 10 years, so we should finally do a space record. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's about time. Was it like a Guar influence, too? <laughs> There's a million bands that have done it. But yeah, actually, we kind of, like, we're like, yeah, Guar did it, and Rush did it, and Blue Oyster Cult did it, and Tanker did it, and there's a long list. And uh, we're just like, well, you know, we're eventually going to do a space album. Like, if we keep at it, we're on a fifth record now. It's like, geez. But you guys so. kind of seem to embrace the cliche and then kind of chew it up and spit it out. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. have fun with it. We have a good time. Awesome. So uh, for anybody who's on the fence about going to get it, what would you tell them? Uh, rips. <laughs> what else do you need to know, right? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> on the way, it's Testament. It's 1077 The Bone. It's the Metal Zone. 1077 The Bone, that is Death Angel in the Metal Zone with Relentless Revolution, the title track to their last album. And uh, Death Angel is going to be playing with Sepultura at the DNA Lounge on April 11th. Tickets are on sale now at dnalounge.com. Before that, we had High on Fire with Spiritual Rights. That is their brand spanking new one. High on Fire going to be on the Rockstar Energy Mayhem Festival. Those tickets going on sale next week at livenation.com. And Testament, Evil Has Landed, started off that set. I'm Nikki Black, and in the studio with me tonight, I have Tony from Municipal Waste. And... Um, Tony, I heard a rumor that you guys um, were banned from Gilman. <laughs> yeah, we're banned from Gilman. Really? Well, we were told that we're not banned anymore the last time we played <laughs> here. And we were like, well, wh- what? What? <laughs> like, how does that what work? What happened when you got banned? And then how did they seem to receive they, that? They had a strict no wizards policy, and we did not oblige. <laughs> we had a wizard. 
You did. Pointy hat, big beard. I think we were like, I, I don't know exactly. You what were banned it was. for Gandalfing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there were mags. We like told people to stage dive or something stupid, and we were drinking in there. And Oh, um, maybe it was because you were drinking because they're not allowed to have alcohol in the premises. Yeah, you can't stage dive there either. I, I, but when people got rowdy too, they You're were like ripping. You're not supposed to stage dive. But I know. Come on, it's come Gilman. On. It's punk, right? Yeah. But no, I, I love Gilman and I love what they do there, but it was just. <laughs> it was really funny at the time because because people were like legitimately mad at us and we we're just like we just got banned from Gilman and everyone gets banned from there. Yeah, well, they I think that Gilman banned Green Day for a while and then they were like, oh, never mind, come back. Yeah, <laughs> people you know, like you. <laughs> people get uptight about stuff and then they then they lighten up. <laughs> so now that you guys are like quote unquote okay to play Gilman, would you? Yeah, I guess again? I think they're wizard friendly now, so yeah, we might all right try that. try that out again. I don't know. I, I like playing there, you know, but. Uh, because you guys are playing much bigger places now. Yeah, so, I don't know if it would be possible. I mean, possible. Do, you, do you miss playing, like, the smaller stuff? I miss playing Burnt Ramen more than I miss playing Gilman because <laughs> they've always been really good to us. Yeah, but Burnt Ramen's kind of like chaos. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, even compared to Gilman, Burnt Ramen is like chaos. Yeah, it's like, you know, there's there's a risk factor in there for, you know, your life and such, but it's still a great place to play. Do you feel like you guys have given that up, or are you just having to recreate it elsewhere? No, we'd, we'd play there again. Like, we just wouldn't be able to, like, flyer it, you know, just tell people. But I mean, I'd, I'd play there. I'd play there tonight after the Guar show. Hint, hint. No, that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would actually be kind of awesome. Um, <laughs> although at this point, I don't think there's anybody we could call to make that happen. I can't. Technically. I call John the Baker. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> well, uh, if anybody's still listening at this point, uh, you may want to just drop by and see what happens. No, don't do it. <laughs> no, no, we're kidding. We're kidding. Don't. It's Machine Head up next in the Metal Zone. It's 1077 The Bone. 1077 The Bone, that is Meshuggah in the Metal Zone with I Am Colossus, brand new from Meshuggah. I forgot to warn you guys that there's a ton of new music on the show tonight. is going to be at the Fillmore on May 6th. Those tickets are on sale now at LiveNation.com. Pantera before that with Hellbound and Machine Head started us off with Aesthetics of Hate. In the studio with me tonight is Tony from Municipal Waste and uh, Municipal Waste, of course, playing with Gore tonight at the... Re- played, I guess, at this point with Gore tonight at the Regency. Um, but coming back June 13th to play at the Oakland Metro with Black Tusk and Three Inches of Blood. Um, Tony, is it true that you're like, um, I don't know how to even ask you this, an art collector? Oh, yeah. I I have a ton of paintings. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not like Lars Ulrich, art collector or anything like that. (laughs) I just got a bunch of paintings. (laughs) So it's, it's not, you're, it's not an investment. I don't look at it like that, but I got it. I guess I got stuff that's worth some money now. I don't know. I got a bunch of like record covers, like, like mostly my own bands, but stuff like that, you know. How did you get into collecting that stuff? Um, just, it kind of just started happening and it snowballed and it it went from like every tour I would go on, I'd buy a painting at the end of it and then it just, and then I had like 40 paintings. (laughs) (laughs) What do you do with 40 paintings? I got I bought a house. So you had to buy a house to put the painting in. (laughs) (laughs) I got this really old house and, and, uh, it's pretty big. So I put, you know, I put them all over the place. Is there any particular style that you gravitate towards? No, I'm not. See, I don't like. I'm not, I don't really, I just buy stuff I like. I don't mm-hmm. really know much about like the whole art scene. I may have got it from my dad. I don't know. My dad owns a Salvador Dali painting, which is pretty cool. That's, a, yeah. yeah. I did. Like, That's kind of a wow. Yeah. And he doesn't even have a ton of paintings, but he has that one. And I, I, whenever I go over there, I'm like, wow, I want that painting so bad. <laughs> and it's tiny, you know? It, it, like, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like really small. It's like almost the size of a postcard, but it's cool. It's like he owns a Salvador Dali painting. It's like, who does? I don't know anybody that does that other than my dad. I, I don't either. He's not like a rich guy. And either. like museums, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like your dad in museums would probably be like the only place I would know. I, I see all my art on the internet. <laughs> my dad's not an artsy dude. It's weird. Like Maybe he is and you just don't know maybe. it. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you are <laughs> and you just don't know it. <laughs> hey, I'm artsy over here. So you're getting ready to uh, end up end up a tour with Guar. Are you going to pick up a new painting? I, I'm I'm getting one of the Guar guys to do one for me, and I'm buying one tonight from Andre Buzgov that I'm really stoked about. How did that come about? Uh, he's one of my favorite artists. He's from here. Um, he, he did the Minas Waste like Art of Parting album cover, but this is like I didn't realize it, but it's an actual it's an album cover for a band from Brazil. I never even heard of the band, but I love the painting, and so I was like. It took me like a year to get it from him, so I'm picking it up tonight. Wow! Awesome. Yeah. Are you gonna post pictures of it so people? Can yeah, yeah. It? I'll probably post it on Twitter or something. Awesome. You're a little tr- you're a little Twitterific. Yeah. I noticed. Um, I'm tweeting. You're tweeting a I little. Tweet up in the rig. Yeah. The um the last tweet that I saw <laughs> was a uh, I guess you had a dream about you and Randy Blythe. <laughs> 
Me and Randy are always saying, saying hilarity ensues. Crap. Yeah, I had a dream that we we quit metal and and went to community college together. <laughs> it was the weirdest dream, and we were like into it. We we're like, yeah, community college, it's rules. In Richmond, that's rad. Learning. I, I I regularly tell people on on the metal zone and like on my Twitter to follow Randy because he tweets. He gets His crazy. tweets are epic. Yeah, so sometimes he'll get worked up and like do like forty a day. It's like whoa. Yeah, it's hard to follow those. Like, like when he's when he goes on a rampage, I I have to like wait till he's finished and then go to his page and then scroll to the bottom and start and and, and get all the way through it. But like, it's yeah, he quit always drinking. Totally worth it. He quit drinking, so now he's like a Twitter aholic or something. I don't know. Like he's yeah. all over it. <laughs> he switched from booze to coffee and skateboarding, yeah. and now he's just like crazed. Good for him. <laughs> Good for us, really. Honestly, <laughs> Ghost is on the way. They're gonna be playing with Mastodon and Opeth at the Fox Theater on April twenty seventh, and Tony from Municipal. Boys hanging out in the studio tonight. It's 107.7 The Bone. It's the Metal Zone. 107.7 The Bone. That is suicidal tendencies in the Metal Zone. We had Exodus before that. In Flames, Transparent. I'm Nikki Black, and in the studio with me tonight, I have Tony from Municipal Waste. And uh, you guys are going to be back in the Bay Area for anybody who missed you tonight with Guar on June, what did we say, 13th? June 13th. June 13th with Black Tusk and Three Inches of Blood at the Oakland Metro. Um, so... I hear that Ryan is supposed to be retiring his guitar. What is what does that mean? He was gonna retire it, and then he <laughs> dropped it and broke his new one. So <laughs> he, it's back, baby. The no, retirement it, sucks tour. It didn't. It, no, it's just. Uh, yeah, he, his, his guitars are pretty crazy, and it's hard to get cases for him because he's a lefty. So uh, we had a little malfunction early in the tour with with it. He's better to answer these questions. I don't really like. I'm, I don't really pay a lot of attention to that. You're like, oh, a guitar player. Yeah, no, no, it's just I'm not, <laughs> I don't even know if he likes talking about it because it was, he was pretty mad when it, when it happened. But uh, he's going to get fixed, like, uh, today or tomorrow. So uh, so the intent was to, was to just be, like, done with it, move on, and yeah. never look back. But, but he's got it on this tour. It might be the last, uh, last hurrah for it. Oh, so this might be your last chance to see it. Ah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy guitar. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so I'm wondering, like, how far into the future are you guys going? Or are you guys able to talk about on this album cycle? Because we know you're coming back on the headline tour. Are you guys planning on doing festivals? The As far as the U.S. goes, this this and the Three Inches of Blood thing might be it for a while. Um, Why? Unless there's another overseas? Tank Crimes brain squeeze, then we'll come out for that. But uh, we're probably going to spend a lot of time in Europe. Er? Unless there's another what? Oh, Tank Crimes Brain Squeeze is a festival that we play here. We used to do the the six weeks records one, and then they stopped doing it. So that was the one at Gilman. I think that's what got us banned. But then uh, now we do Tank Crimes Brain Squeeze. It's like they let you bring the wizard. Yeah, they're totally wizard. They're wizard friendly. friendly. Yeah, nice. <laughs> but uh, we did it last year uh, with Phil's other band, Cannabis Corpse and Toxic mm -hmm. Holocaust. Ghoul, who's playing tonight as well, or played tonight as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's weird so, living in the future, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but our our friend Scotty puts it on, and he does the label, and he's also putting out the, our split with Toxic. So, so uh, it's basically up to Scotty. Yeah, yeah. If he does it again, then we'll be out here again. So, I like how but, I like how he wields that kind of power. Yeah, you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> um, oh, buddy. and um, so we just played Suicidal Tendencies. I saw your mommy, and uh, I noticed that you guys have done some touring with Suicidal Tendencies, and I'm assuming they're kind of an influence. Yeah. The, huge influence on me and they're also one of like my all-time favorite bands to tour with like some of the best dudes any good su uh, suicidal tour stories uh just like just wor working with mike muir like seeing him every night and how down to earth and cool he is they were, they were just like the most giving band like they were just like this is our dressing room like this is your dressing room this is come in the bus like do this whatever like they were just so down to earth uh one of the cool one of the like crazier things is that like Mike Muir has been in like two gnarly car accidents in the past couple of years. And like, like I think he broke his back and then got hit by another car. Like he's, he's been through some stuff and he gets out there and has way more energy than I do on stage. Like, I don't know how he, after, after like being in so many accidents and whatever, man, he's a tough dude and I, I admire the heck out of him. He's he's bound and determined, if nothing else. Yeah, it's amazing to watch them rip it up every night. Awesome. <laughs> I love those guys.
<laughs> All right. Marilyn Manson, brand new stuff from Marilyn Manson is on the way. And uh, Tony is hanging out with us for just a little while longer. It's 107.7 The Bone. It's The Metal Zone. 107.7 The Bone. That is Mastodon in The Metal Zone. Before that, we had uh, Cannibal Corpse with Priest of Sodom. And Marilyn Manson, brand new one, No Reflection. Mastodon is going to be with Opeth and Ghost at the Fox Theater in Oakland on April 27th. Those tickets are on sale now at apeconcerts.com. That's apeconcerts.com. And I think that one's probably, if it hasn't already, going to sell out. So if you haven't gotten your tickets to that one, get them now or you will just have to cry. In the studio with me, I have Tony from Municipal Waste. And um, I did have a question for you that I I did a little Googling on you guys. And it said that you almost burnt down a stage in Oslo, Norway, because you were trying to set fire to a church? We wanted to be the first band to burn a church on stage in Norway. Uh-huh. So we made this crappy uh, <laughs> church out of beer <laughs> can boxes <laughs> and lit it on fire, and then it almost... And then it blew off the stage, and <laughs> the stage almost caught on fire, and we almost had to stop playing. <laughs> because <laughs> Did anybody ever tell you guys not to set fire to stuff inside of a theater? <laughs> it was actually an was outdoor like, festival, which oh, made okay. it even sketchier because it was like the wind and stuff. But they always set fire to stuff at outdoor festivals. Uh, not churches, apparently. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Well, I don't, I don't know when they do normally light stuff on fire. I don't think they use like hairspray and a lighter like I did. Oh, <laughs> so man. maybe that's what it was. Yeah. And, and and what was the what was the spark for this an idea when it first started? Just cuz I guess like people like to burn churches in Norway mm-hmm. or they have in the past. And you guys were like when in Rome? Well, we had to one up them, you know. Like nobody's <laughs> ever done it on stage, so we're like, all right, well you guys want to get evil, let's get evil. But so we then no... it said church on the we wrote <laughs> church on it. It was pretty bad, it was, but it made, it was like national headlines, like it was in the newspapers there and like, <laughs> idiot bam tries to light church on fire on stage. That's kind of priceless. But you guys got out of the country unscathed? Yeah, no, it was cool. It, it ended up all right. Yeah, th- we didn't get asked to play that festival again for some oh. reason, but <laughs> it might have just been because, I don't know. So it's just filed under things that seemed like a good idea at the time. It and was a great idea fine. at the time. <laughs> Awesome. Municipal Waste. They may or may not set something on fire at the Oakland Metro June 13th. And uh, on the way, this is brand new from God Forbid. They're going to be at uh, the Regency with Overkill on May 2nd. It's 1077 The Bone. It's the Metal Zone. 1077 The Bone. That is Red Fang in the Metal Zone with Prehistoric Dog. SOD before that with United Forces and brand new God Forbid with Where We Come From. I'm Nikki Black and you can check out God Forbid with Overkill at the Regency on May 2nd. Those tickets are on sale now at goldenvoice.com. And Tony from Municipal Waste has been hanging out with me in the studio all damn night. And you are going to be able to see them June 13th at the Oakland Metro with Black Tusk and Three Inches of Blood. Um, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Any uh, any parting thoughts for the Bay Area? Oh, that SOD song we covered that with Billy Milano one time. Did you really? Yeah, it where was at? Awesome. In Texas, he lives in Texas now. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But, so he uh, came out and you guys did United Forces. Yeah, yeah. He's a really big guy. I didn't even know that. <laughs> you Billy? I mean, I knew he was, but I was like, dang, dude. Billy Milano, the funny. He's he's funny. He's freaking hilarious. I don't know why he's not doing stand up. He does do stand up. Is he it's doing funny it now? You say that. Okay. And this tour, we were gonna get him to do tour with us and do stand up for the Black Tusk tour. I, I was I was on the blood. business end of a Billy Milano food fight one time, and it I like you can't stop laughing. Yeah, he's outrageous. There's nothing that man will not do. But yeah, that's funny you say that. He's started doing stand up, and he's actually like doing gigs around around the country. That's awesome. I have to get him on my show. Yeah, now. I want to look that up and like see if it's funny or not. It might just be scary, you know? Like, is he can get mad sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this is well, like I said, I was on the business yeah, end of a food <laughs> fight and it's not pretty. It's <laughs> it's funny, but it's it's not pretty. So Municipal Waste, the new album comes out on Tuesday. It's called Fatal Feast and you will see these guys back here in the Bay Area at the Oakland Metro on June thirteenth with Black Tusk and Three Inches of Blood. One hundred percent pure rock. One oh seven seven the bone.